Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to do a little bit of research and digging into some data for three particular stocks. And, and what we're going to find is that the information is there to be able to give us clues to make better decisions and really help understand the story of what's going on with these companies. And so the three stories we're going to dig into today are McDonald's and their flat revenues, Caterpillar and their cyclical slowdown, and Hershey and their interesting sales mix. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna be using FinChat for this and it's really the perfect tool to dig into these type of data points for stocks. It's something that I've been using in the background. They've made a bunch of updates to it and I already told you guys that you're gonna be seeing a lot more of it. People have already asked about doing like a review video and all that, all that's coming. Um, but I wanna show you the type of interesting things that you can see in here. And this is all stuff that I was doing manually before that now becomes very easy to see. And when we get to the Hershey part, there's information there that I missed in my original analysis before I bought that if I had seen it, I probably would have thought twice about buying that stock. All right, but let's get started and look at McDonald's. Now, the first thing that you're going to see here is that this is the McDonald's revenue chart over the past 12 years or so from 2012 to 2024. And so what you see is that their revenue is basically flat or even down. And this is something that you see a lot of people talk about, especially online. They're saying, oh, McDonald's is, you know, revenues have been flat for a decade and that's why it's not a good stock. Now, it's had its problems. If you watch my channel, you know that I've been talking about how it struggled a little bit. But there is a little more to this story than just saying, hey, the revenues are flat over the past decade. And we're going to dig into that right now. One thing that McDonald's has been doing as a company over the past decade is trying to transition out of the company operated restaurants to more franchised operated restaurants. And what that means is company operated restaurants are ones where McDonald's is actually doing the operations of the store and they're counting every single sale, every Happy Meal sale, all that is revenue. But when they have a franchise store, it's where McDonald's owns the land, maybe they own the building, and they really just get royalties from the franchisee who operates the day-to-day. -day. So instead of just looking at McDonald's total revenues, what if we actually broke this down to company-operated revenue and franchise revenue? Now what we have is the company-operated revenue is in blue, and the franchised restaurant revenue is in orange. And so what you see is that back in 2012, the vast majority of revenue was company operated restaurant revenue. And you can see it slowly kind of comes down throughout the years as the orange or franchise restaurant revenue comes up. So that's a pretty clear trend, right? The company operated restaurant revenue is going down. The franchise operated revenue is going up. And so clearly their plan to move away from company operated restaurants has been put into motion and they've been seeing success. But what you might say is, okay, well, yeah, great. But at the end of the day, revenue is still lower in 2024 than it was in 2012. And you would be right about that. But let me show you something else. But what if we added the gross profit margin to this chart? Adding the gross profit margin, you can see that back Back in 2012, McDonald's had a gross profit margin of just under 40%. And as they've transitioned away from company operated restaurants, it has gone steadily up to where now it's at 56.97%. So a drastic improvement in gross profit margin that's directly related to this trend of getting out of company operated restaurants and into more franchise operated restaurants. And so what that means in a nutshell is that if your gross profit margin is up about 20%, then even though your revenues are lower, your profit is actually higher. And we can actually see that if we add operating income into this chart. And so you see the original total revenue chart here, where it's flat or actually down from 2012. But if you look at the orange operating income, you can tell that in 2024, it was 11.7 billion, and in 2012, it was 8.3 billion. And so while revenue is technically flat or down, operating income is up, and it's directly related to the transition from less company-operated restaurants and more franchise-operated restaurants, which means a higher gross profit margin for McDonald's Corporation. And so that's why if you just look at revenue growth, you're not really going to get the whole story because this doesn't tell you what's going on with the company. Whereas if you're able to break it down by specific segments and see the trend of what's actually going on in the business, then the story becomes a lot clearer. And I think we've actually talked about this with McDonald's before, but it's nice to be able to actually get the visual to see it because it makes it really clear that, look, if your gross profit margin is jumping 20% in like a decade, then yeah, sure, revenues are declining or they're flat or whatever, but you're making a lot more profit and it means that the margins of your business 
are a lot better. All right, so let's take a look at Caterpillar. Now, as you guys know, I recently sold Caterpillar and basically my reasoning was that it's a cyclical company and I think that we're at the point where the cycle is turning a little bit and I don't expect Caterpillar to perform all that well, at least the way that it had over the past year or so. And so let's take a look at the chart. And what we have here is we have revenues in blue and then orange is free cash flow, right? And so at first glance, you say, okay, yeah, revenues are down a little bit from 2023, at least so far in 2024, and we're not to the end of the year yet. But if you look at free cash flow, it's actually up compared to last year. And so what's the problem? I mean, it's the stock that's been performing extremely well. And why would I want to sell? And so first off, let's actually put the stock price overlaid over the fundamentals. And I think this is kind of an interesting view. They're not always correlated, right? But it's interesting to see how the stock price changes as certain kind of data points in the fundamentals happen to change as well. And so at first glance, you don't really see much here. But if we add the total revenue percent change, which is basically the growth rate, then it gets a little bit interesting. In general, we do know that they're a cyclical company, which is why you see their revenue graph look like this, where it's up, down, up big, down big, and it kind of continues that cycle throughout the years. And I mean, that is the literal definition of cyclical. And if we take out the percent change and actually let's take out the stock price as well, I mean, you can see it just in the revenue graph itself. I mean, it's going up and down, and this is over a 20 year period. And so if we put the percent change back, we can see that revenue has been declining since 2021. And so initially you might be like, okay, maybe that's a problem. But then when you look at free cash flow, you're like, well, free cash flow is higher than it's probably ever been. So is it really an issue or is it just, you know, revenues down this year, but it's going to go back up again? Or as we get to the end of the year, it's actually going to spike back up, right? We don't know. But then if we look at this on the quarterly chart, then we see it's a little bit clearer. The revenue growth has been decelerating for a while. And this was of Q2 2023, came down to 12, then 2.9. Then it's been negative the last two quarters, which is what we talked about in my most recent video about CAT when I said I was going to sell because revenue growth was one of the things that I was monitoring. And basically, this was quarter number two in a row where it was negative growth. But the thing that really put it over the top for me was when I looked at the free cash flow. Because if you look at free cash flow in Q2 of 24, it was $2.3 billion. And if you look at it in Q2 of 2023, it was actually $2.5 billion. So this was the first quarter in a long time that free cash flow actually had negative growth. And that was a catalyst for me to say, look, I don't know how Cat's going to do, but I do know that Revenue growth is declining for the past two quarters. Free cash flow growth is declining for the first quarter in about two years. So it is a cyclical company, and I'm going to take those as an initial sign that the cycle is starting to turn. If we add the stock price overlay back, and I'll basically remove everything other than revenue growth, we can just see that as revenue growth comes down in general, the stock tends to kind of trade flat. And then even here, revenue growth decelerating, the stock is kind of trading flat. So again, it's not a perfect science. There's never a perfect indicator. But in general, for a cyclical company, when you have revenue growth that's starting to decelerate, then it usually means that the stock price is going to come down. And if you look at where we're at right now, it's been decelerating for a while, and yet the stock price has done nothing but go up. So is that an indication that it's just going to keep going up and all this stuff doesn't mean anything? It could be, but I took it as, you know what? It's a good time to take my profits. I had a really good run with CAT, and I have specific data points that are telling me that maybe the cycle is starting to turn. Now, at the end of the day, only time will tell if that ends up being correct, but that was a logic that I put towards it and what I was actually looking at to tell me maybe now's the time. Okay, so last but not least, let's talk about Hershey. Now, I know when I sold Hershey in February, I got a lot of comments about, oh, you're not a long-term investor. You don't know that real returns are generated from buying out of favor stocks and all these things. But there's something interesting that I saw in this Hershey chart that actually, when I thought back on it, it would have really helped me when I did my original analysis. And had I noticed it, I probably wouldn't have bought the stock back when I did. But let me go through and show you what I mean. So what we have here is a chart that shows three different lines for Hershey. One is basically their net sales growth, right? So net sales growth each quarter. And I'm doing it on the quarterly basis just because it's easier to see the trend in what I'm talking about. And actually, I'll start it with just that net sales growth. Let's look at that by itself. 
So when I look at net sales growth for Hershey, you can see that, okay, over the past few years here, it's been in the double digits. I mean, 12.9, 15.5, 11, 14. And so up until the past year or so, there's been pretty good revenue growth, right? And at the end of the day, that's what you want to see out of any company. But what's missing here is showing you how that growth actually happened. Now we have organic price growth and we have organic volume or mixed growth. And so the difference between those is price growth is literally they're raising prices and volume or mixed growth is they're selling more units. And what you'll notice is if you go back to Q2 2021, they had net sales growth of 15.5%, which is a really good quarter. And 14.5 of that was organic volume or mixed growth, while only 1% of that was price growth. So what that means is they only rose prices about 1%, but they moved 14.5% more, and that's how they got their 15.5% growth. That's ideal and a really good quarter. But take a look at what happens over the next couple of years. Their sales growth goes down to 4.4, and we see that 3.1% of it was actually price growth, where only 1.3% was volume growth. And this trend starts to continue. In December 2021, they had 4% net sales growth, where 6.1% of that was price growth, which means that volume growth was actually negative. And we can see it right here, it was negative 2.1. And so as 2022 goes on, you can see net sales up 11.5 and 6.9% is price. 14.1 and 9.5 percent is price and this happens all the way through to 2023 where in q1 2023 they had 12.2 percent growth where 8.9 percent was price growth so at this point in time hershey's has basically been raising prices every quarter and that's how they were getting their sales growth even though volume growth was really stagnating and in some quarters it was negative. And so when we get to Q2 2023, what we see is that net sales growth is 5%, while price growth, again, is 7.7, .7, and volume growth is negative 2.7. So you kind of get the point. In 2021 and 2022, even though Hershey had really good sales growth, it was mostly price increases as opposed to moving volume. Now, if we overlay the stock price, we can kind of see a story here. As their revenue growth was growing, the stock price was growing. And then we got to this point here, which was May of 2023, and let's try to analyze what happened. So number one, they had 5% growth, which was relatively slow growth, and it was mostly price, or it was basically all price at 7.7 .7 and negative 2.7%. Now you might say offhand, okay, well obviously they had negative volume growth, so people probably thought they're going to slow down, they're having issues, and so that's why the price went from... 274 and started to come down basically to where it is today, 190, 185. But as we know, Hershey also had a problem in 2023 related to cocoa prices. And if we look at the cocoa price, we can see that all through 2021, 2022 was about the same level. But then when we got to 2023, especially around May, it started to increase and then eventually went up exponentially all the way to April of 2024. So now if we come back to our chart, we can see that the peak of Hershey's stock price was in May of 2023, and then it came down basically the whole way until April of 2024, which was where it was at its bottom at about 182. So if we add the operating margin into this chart, we can see that it was above 20 for most of the time. But now as we get to 2023, we see that it's dropping below 20%. They had a slight pop here in Q1, but then now down to 15.7%. And then when you combine that with the fact that sales have been negative for two of the past three quarters with a minus 16.8% in the most recent quarter, you could see exactly what happened with Hershey. They were having double digit sales all through 2023, but those sales were mostly price increases and not actually moving volume. And then you combine the fact with price increases not being as effective or them reaching a limit of what the customer would pay. And then you get cocoa prices that are rising exponentially over the past year. And what you get is basically Hershey going from 274 down to 181. So for anybody that's still invested in Hershey, I think it's a question of, okay, what are the catalysts that are going to improve this, right? Your operating margin is being squeezed partially because of cocoa prices, but it could be other things as well. But then your ability to raise prices is probably close to the limit of where it's going to be, which is why price growth has slowed down so much. And then you also have a volume growth issue where it's the lowest that it's been 
in a really long time. So it's really a question of, do you believe it's just a bad quarter? It's a temporary blip and they're still going to be okay going forward. Or do you think that these cocoa prices are going to stay elevated, right? Because even though they have come down, they're way higher than they were a few years ago when Hershey was doing really well, right? So you have multiple things going on that are putting pressure on Hershey being able to have successful quarters. And that's why for me, there was just too much uncertainty with the cocoa prices that I didn't want to deal with it. But had I saw this breakdown of most of their sales growth being actual price increases and not volume, then I probably would have approached it differently when I originally bought. Now I saw the mix in price versus volume growth in my analysis, but I didn't realize that back in 2021, they were actually growing with volume as opposed to price. And so you could see the trend kind of change over those past two years where it was really about constant price increases and lower volume. So as an investor, you're like, okay, yes, Hershey's does have pricing power, but at what point is that going to be exhausted when you're not getting the volume growth that you need? At the end of the day, you know, you might see that and be like, you know what, whatever, you're getting too deep into the analysis. It's analysis paralysis. It's just a quarter. They'll be fine. They're a great company. And and that may possibly be true, but these are interesting things to me because I think it gives us a little bit more insight on how do we actually value these companies? How can we actually understand the story of what's happening behind the scenes with the data that's available to us? And I think when we're able to use these tools that are a little bit more visual, it's just easier to see it because this was clear as day to me to be like, okay, they had 15.5% sales growth and look, the volume growth is right there, 14.5 of it. I mean, that makes it very clear because you can just see in the trend that that's not the case anymore. So, you know, it's just another way for us to look at these things, to get as much information as we can to make smart decisions. And, you know, for some people, this is going to be too deep and they're not going to want to do all this or they don't think it's valuable. And that's totally cool. But for me, I love looking at stuff like this because I'm trying to understand the business behind the stock. And I just really think this stuff helps. So what did you guys think about the three stocks and the three stories attached to them? Let me know down in the comments below. Now, if you missed my latest portfolio update video, you can watch that by clicking this video right here. Hope you guys have a great day out there. Financial independence is true freedom. So keep building and stacking wins. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.